Hello everyone and welcome. In the previous episode, we learned what Cilium and ABPF are and how Cilium takes advantage of the new technology called ABPF. If you missed that episode, you can click on this notification up here. In this episode, we will learn about Cilium endpoints and identities, among other things, and we will dive into Cilium network policies L3, L7, L4, and L7. During the demos, we will also explore Cilium CLI and Hubble UI and Hubble CLI. Cilium provides security on multiple levels. Each can be used individually or combine them together. Let's go through those. The first type is called identity-based, and these are connectivity policies between endpoints. That is layer three. For instance, any endpoint with label role equal to front end can connect to any endpoint with uh, label is equal to uh, role equal to back end. So when we say endpoint, in this case, we mean a pod. So Cilium can be actually applied not only to pod, but also on virtual servers as well. That's why they use endpoint, which is more generic. But in this scenario, we are, uh, the context is pods. So let's say, uh, let's see what we mean by that. So these pods, four pods have the same um, label called role equal to front end. So these are front end, front end pods, and these are back end pods, pods and they are um, identified by role equal to back end. But the question is, how do we individually identify these pods? So you might be thinking, well, each pod has a unique IP address, so we could use IP addresses as the um, representative or identifier of these pods. And that's very true, a very good way of thinking, because Kubernetes uh, assigns uh, unique IP addresses to the pods that it creates. So we can say, we can create a rule that says, the pods that have these IPs can talk to pods that have these IPs. And that works, and works well in uh, you know, small environments. However, as you may know, pods are ephemeral, which means that they can be created, you know, deleted, recreated, and every time that a pod is recreated, then it gets a new IP address. For instance, let's say this pod over here is on a node, and that node is rebooted. So what happens is, during that rebooting process, that pod is uh, deleted and then recreated when the uh, node comes back. But the problem here is now it has a new IP address. So what we need to do is go back to our table and change the rule from the previous IP, which was 10.00 to, um, to now 10.0044. And again, this is not a big deal in so, you know, smaller environment when you have when you have tens of thousands of these pods, and all of them, you know, a lot of them, you know, will be deleted, recreated, redeployed, and there will be a lot of churns and changes to these tables, which is not very um, efficient. For that reason, Cilium comes up with a new uh, way of identifying this pod and actually assigns what is known as identity. So when a new pod is generated, it created, um, Cilium assigns it a new identity. And the identity is based on the uh, labels that this pod has. So these four pods, because they have the same identity, um, they have the same labels, they also have the same identity. So all of them now have a single identity called 3141. Similarly, over here, these pods have the same uh, labels. They are also generated exactly the same identity. Now we could change our, the rules here in our tables, and rather than using um, the IP addresses, which are not stable, we can now use uh, the identity, which are permanent. So as long as the um, labels do not change, these, uh, we don't have to make any changes to these rules here. I'll go over how these identities are generated in the next slide, but for now, just remember that when the pod is created, 
uh, a new identity is generated for that pod. So we can also have policies based on port number or la layer four. For instance, we can say endpoint, uh, all the pods with endpoint um, role equal to um, front end can only uh, make outgoing call connection on port 443. And similarly, endpoint with the label role equal to back end can only accept connection on port 443. So it's another uh, category of policies that we can apply. And the last one is uh, L7, and that is the uh, kind of more fine-grained control. In this scenario, we can say, uh, for instance, any pod which has the label role equal to front end can only perform the risk API call um, based on this rule. And this basically the URI um, type. It, it has to be a get, and it should start with slash user data slash, and then anything from zero to nine. So this is the criteria for allowing um, any uh, calls be you know made to that URL. So this is another great way and very flexible to apply policies. Now let's see how the identity, the security identity that we just talked about um, is generated when the pod is created. So before that, let's quickly talk about CRDs. So CRD stands for Custom Resource Definition. And this is a way that Kubernetes allows us to introduce our own custom resource definitions without recompiling Kubernetes. And Cilium has its own CRDs or Custom Resource Definitions. When we, def when we install um, Cilium, it also installs some services such as Cilium Agent and Cilium Operator. And it's the job of a Cilium Operator. One of its job is to then create those CRDs that are Cilium specific. And some of those uh, I've listed here, such as Cilium Identity, Cilium Endpoint, and Cilium Network Policy. There are other ones as well. So let's go through the process of and see how the identity is generated, the security identity when a pod is created. So let's go, let's see if we, um, we go to the command line and then we create this deployment called Hello World and we get the image from here. So this is basically a simple deployment um, application. So what happens when we hit enter, it sends to the API server, API server calls into Kubelet, then calls into CRI, uh, and the CRI downloads the image that is associated with this image and then downloads that into uh, the, the container runtime environment. So we have now this image now created, now we have a pod or a container here. The CRI calls it into CNI, um, which is in this case is Cilium. So Cilium creates the, a narrow namespace for that pod it also creates the VETS or virtual internet. So they, they come in pair. One is installed on the pod and the other one, the other um, kind of end is installed on the, uh, the, the host. And it creates then sets up a pipe that connects the host to um, this pod over here. And finally, it assigns an IP address for that pod and also sets the default route. So this pod now will be able to, um, afterwards we'll be able to connect to the outside world. So the next thing that happens is the container runtime informs CLI, um, Cilium agent that the pod was created and Cilium starts working on creating what is known as endpoint object. So whenever a pod is created, Cilium also creates uh, its counterpart called endpoint object. Basically, this is a, a, a virtual definition um, of that pod that we just created. It has many attributes, and we're showing you know, a subset of those. It also has um, what is called an ID. So then don't confuse this ID with the identity that we just talked about earlier. So this is a, a random number that is generated for each um, endpoint and when the um, pod is recreated, that this will also change. So 
Uh, the other uh, identity that we were talking about is down here. So let's go through that and see that how that more of a permanent identity is created. So it's all really based on tables. The first thing that it does, it gets a default um, label uh, from the pod. So when we deploy this deployment called Hello World, it also takes that name and automatically generates um, a label for it in that pod. So it gets that uh, label from pod. It also generates other labels, and more of metadata information that gets from Kubernetes and also from Cilium. So for instance, the what uh, namespace um, is running on the service account and the, the policy cluster. So it takes all of those and then it generates a hash. Once that hash is generated, then it generates, um, based on that, a unique ID. So now this pod has this identity called 3411. Again, all other parts that have the same identity uh, or the same labels, they have the exact same identity. So recall that the, the, the other pods will have their own ID. So again, don't, don't confuse this ID with this. Um, so once after that, then it persists that identity into the CR, CRD that was uh, adds a record to that, uh, generate a, a new record for that CRD over here. And finally, it also creates um, a new um, entry for that endpoint in that um, in the Cilium endpoint. And finally, then that pods become available and the, um, for instance, this is now running on port 8080 and we'll be able to now serve the clients. Demo time. For this demo, we are going to use an application, a sample application, which um, is provided by the Cilium team. And this application is actually a Star Wars inspired application. And there are a number of services, actually three services. One is called Death Star. The other one is called TIE Fighter. And the last one is called x -Fing. So let's take a look at what each service does. So the Death Star service provides landing services to the Empire's spaceships so they can request a landing port. The TIE Fighter pod represents a landing request client service on an Empire ship. And the X-Wing pod represents a landing request uh, client service on an Alliance ship. Let's take a look at the policies that you're going to implement. So first, uh, we will uh, start with the L3, L4 ingress network, uh, network policy. And in that policy, we are going to allow uh, TIE Fighter to call the Death Star on port 80. So this is allowed. We're also going to disallow requests from the uh, X-Wing uh, pod. For L7, we are going to keep our L4 um, policies in um, enforced. We are, we, are, we are going to now add a new restriction or policy, and we are going to allow TIE Fighter to do a post HTTP post um, access to slash v1 slash request landing. So this is allow. And you're going to this allow um, put a v1 exhaust ports. So obviously that's a dangerous thing. We don't want anybody to have access to that port. So, so this is basically the uh, scenario, a simple scenario that we're going to uh, see how policies are created and applied in Cilium. We are going to also showcase Hubble and take take a look at some of these uh, transactions as, as they happen. We have Visual Studio Code now to implement what we just discussed to deploy the sample application and also um, apply the security policies or network policies we just described. Along the way, we also um, talk about, and we'll show you the endpoints, the identity, um, security identity, CLI, 
Cilium CLI and with its APVF options, we also take a look at Hubble, both through UI and command line. So the first thing that we need to do is to install the application and that is on line one. We're going to get that, the sample application from here. Let's go ahead and run that. So that's the YAML file that contains the application and it tells us that it, everything was created. We can double check that on line four. KubeCTL get services. So this is the Death Star service that was installed and this is the cluster IP, um, IP address. You can also take a look at the pods. So kubectl get pods minus oy. Let's go ahead and run that. And we'll see that our Death Star service is installed on two pods. One is running on master and the other one is running on node two. For these demos, I'm using a cluster with two nodes, the master and node two. And I have untainted the master so we, we are able to deploy and schedule pods on it. So TIE Fighter is the other um, pod that was deployed and that is running on um, node two. And so is <coughs> X-Wing. So that's also installed on node two and it's running. So let me get clear that. And then if you recall, when we deploy a pod, Cilium also creates an endpoint, which is its representation of the pod. And to, in order to um, view the endpoints, we need to actually um, execute the command from inside um, the Cilium agent. So in order to do that, we need to uh, get the names of the Cilium agents or, or pods that are running on each node. So this command, kubectl minus n, kubesystem get pods minus l, that is what labels we are, we are looking for. So the labels that are associated with Cilium are called ks-ab equal to Cilium. So if we run that, we'll see that there are two agents running. And these are two pods and each pod is one pod is running on master and the other one is running on cube two, on uh, node two. So for convenience, I'm going to capture the master, the one that is running on master and put it in this variable called master underscore cilium <coughs> underscore pod. So let's go ahead and run that. <coughs> and then we can echo it out to verify that and we'll see that. So we have now the name of the pod, the cilium agent pod that is running on um, <clears throat> master. So in order to get the endpoint, uh, this is the command that we need to execute from inside the pod so that we are going to exit into the, the agent that is running on master, on the pod. And then the command is cilium endpoint list. So if you run that, we'll see that it shows us all the endpoints that are running on um, master node on the agent or running on node one or master node. So let's take a look at the columns here and see what they represent. Scroll down here. So first of all, it um, has an endpoint. Um, so the endpoint, um, each endpoint has an ID as we described earlier during the presentation. And the next column is policy and applies to ingress. So it shows us if any policy or policies have applied to this endpoint. And right now there is no policy. We haven't applied any policies yet. So there's nothing here, it's all disabled. And egress, it applies to the traffic going out. So um, again, we are not, we haven't impl implemented any uh, um, policies yes so everything is disabled and identity is the security identity that is we talked about that earlier and is derived from the uh, labels that are associated with an endpoint and so that ID is coming from and then again the labels are here and then we have the IPv6 IPv4 and status so um, I have disabled 
IPv6, so we don't have any IPv6 for these, but we, have, we do have IPv4, so each endpoint again represents a pod, and these are the uh, IP addresses and the status of each one of those. So let me clear that. And we can do the same thing on this, the other node. So let's go ahead and run that. And then we can echo it out. And that's the name of the other agent running on a node 2. And we can run, again, the same command, endpoint list. So these are uh, exactly similar to one that we had earlier. And these are running on um, uh, node 2. And we can see, for instance, these are classes. That starter is one of the services that's running on, on this. And then we have the TIE Fighter and so on. So um, if you want to be specifically take a look at an endpoint, we can run the command here. Cilium endpoint get and the endpoint ID. So if we run that, we'll see that this is how the, the endpoint is actually represented inside Cilium. And that is what I showed you during the demo kind of partial view of when I was showing how the identities are uh, generated. So this is basically how it is um, saved inside um, Cilium. Uh, CRD. And on line 20, we can also take a look at identity lists independent of. Um, so earlier we looked at endpoint and then it endpoint shows identity. We can also go uh, directly to the identity and list all the identities that are installed on a, a specific node. Again, we run that and again we'll see that these are the identities and the associated. Um, um, labels. We can also, if you want to, we can get one of these, for instance, this ID here. Let's copy that. And then on next line, on line 21, we can go Cilium, identity, get, and just, you know, show that specifically without showing anything else. So, and we'll see that we can go to a specific identity if we want to examine what's uh, inside it. So let's go ahead and clear that. Okay, now um, we can also take a look at the services that are running or the load balancing, look at what services are running and how they are load balanced on line 24. So Cilium service um, list, so let's go around that. And we'll see that it shows um, the service and the pods that are behind. And basically it shows for this cluster IP, these are the uh, services behind. And for that one, for instance, these are the services that, or these are the pods that are running behind that uh, load balance. Let's go ahead and clear that. On line 27, um, if, uh, as I mentioned in, in the first episode, um, Cilium exclusively uses uh, ABPF or BPF. BPF and ABPF are really the same thing. So originally um, they were called BP, BPF and then they extend that. Um, and now it's called ABPF. So you might see BPF or ABPF pointed the same thing. However, the command line, you need to specify Cilium BPF. So when we run that, it shows us all the command BPF commands that are available to us. So these are the lists, for instance, bandwidth, um, BPF, uh, data bandwidth settings, CT. This is the uh, connection tracking table. And this is uh, the contract that we talked about in the previous episode. Egress, so egress routing rules, endpoint map, and, and so on. So we, we're going to take a look at uh, some of this uh, EBPF uh, specific commands. Let's go ahead and clear that. And then the first thing that we're going to look at, look at LB. So Cilium, BPF, LP list. So list the load balance. So again, this is very similar to the service that we showed here. This is the, the way that now BPF or ABPF represent. I'm just going to run that. 
So you see the very similar information, again, each um, service and what pods are behind that. And so let's go ahead and clear that. We scroll down. You can also take a look at um, the mount that um, Cilium is using. So Cilium, BPF, FS, show. So let's go ahead and run that. On the file system, and we see that this is where um, ABPF uh, specifically, that is all the maps that are created. This is basically a, um, the file system that it's being used and then um, saved into those AB uh, or the, the maps. On line 35, you can also take a look at the tunnel. So if you recall, uh, Cilium by default uses um, VXLAN for overlay network. So let me run that. And this is the BPF. I'm using the default mode, which is VXLAN. And this is the tunnel that is represented on uh, the master node. You can do the same thing on line 36. And this is the tunnel, which is now represented on the other node. So it gives you an idea of what you can do with uh, B, um, BPF uh, soft commands within um, the CLI. Okay, now before actually running the application, now we deploy the application, we haven't really done anything. I'll just show you how the load balancing information, the identity and so on. Now, before getting um, into actually running the application and implementing the, um, the policies, uh, I want to uh, start the Cilium Hubble UI. So if you recall, Hubble uses um, its observability and tracing utility. So we can actually see what's going on as commands, as traffic is starts happening within the cluster. We can track those. So uh, um, open a, another um, terminal here. I'm going to start that, run that over here. So it takes a couple of seconds for Visual uh, to, to start the Cilium uh, Hubble uh, UI, and then Visual Studio uh, provides a proxy to that. So if you click on this, it will open a browser for us automatically. So in order to make this happen, you need to install Visual Studio Code. Um, the, the, the several extensions on the, 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 the node that you want to um, view the UI on. So this is the default view. And then there are um, various namespaces that you can go to. We're going to select default because this is where the application was installed on. Right now, there is nothing to view because there's no application. We haven't executed anything. So let's go ahead and run, um, some, uh, run the application. And the first one that we're going to run on line 43 uh, from Xwing. We, uh, pod, we're going to request landing from the Death Star. So let's go ahead and run that. Oops, sorry, I have to switch back to the other one because that's waiting on the UI command. So let's go ahead and run that. And we'll see that um, ship land. Um, so because we haven't applied any policy, even X-Wing is able to land um, on the Death Star. So let's go back. The UI and we'll see that now the, the representation of the command that, that, that we just ran. So X-Wing called into Death Star on port 80. And you can actually click on each one of these lines and get more information, very comprehensive information, the timestamp, timestamp, the verdict. So basically, basically it means forward means that it was successful. If it's drop, if we have an uh, a policy that drops uh, traffic, then we'll see it dropped here. And then the direction of the traffic is ingress coming in. And Cilium event type is to endpoint. And this is the TCP flag. And the source is X-Wing. The source identity, so this is the identity of that pod. And these are the um, labels that are um, as part of that pod and this is its IP address. So you'll see that you get really good, great information 
if you want to trace what's going on and observe what's going on, let's go back to the uh, Visual Studio again and we run e execute. Now this time we we'll ask from Type Fighter we request landing on the Death Star. So let's go and run that again. This is successful. Ship landed. Let me go back to UI. Now we'll see that we have the Type Type Fighter also. And again, we can go in deep in there if we want to. And also, we have some options here. For instance, any verdict, and that is both, both shows it both forwarded or dropped. If you want to see or look at what is dropped, you see that there's nothing here right now. Um, everything is allowed. So we go back and look at forward. We'll see that it shows the forward. You can also enable and disable some of visuals such as. Uh, remote node. Um, we can also hide um, cube DNS, uh, which run on line on on port fifty three. Okay. Now uh, we want to uh, implement. As we saw, there was no policy running, so we we can now um, apply some policy. Um, so let's take a look at the first policy that we're going to. Um, apply. So this is L3, L4 type policy and the type is Cilium Network Policy and then under metadata we select a name for it, we call it Rule 1. Then under spec section we can have a description. This is optional, describe what the rule is for. And the endpoint selected. So what uh, endpoints this rule will apply to? And we doing uh, matching um, through label. So any service or pod that has these uh, labels, org is empire and class is the dead star. So this basically our dead dead star. This rule applies to our dead star service. And then the in, um, the direct direction is in or ingress coming in, and from which endpoint. So. This is basically specify what endpoint from, from which endpoint traffic is allowed. So, if uh, it only applies to the endpoint uh, to the callers that are allowed to come in, and then the, under the match label, we are any part that has a label called org empire is allowed in. So that is the L L three part of it. Now, as far as the L uh, four portion of it, two ports. Because uh, L4 really port, we are dealing with ports. And then um, the, the port number is 80 and protocol is TCP. So basically, any pod that has the label org um, empire and is calling into port 80 and TCP, the call is allowed. So let's go ahead and execute that policy. And now that policy is created. Now let's go, ahead, go back again inside the Cilium um, endpoints and see uh, uh, the, uh, what um, changes we'll see. So let's go ahead and run that. So we're going to the master endpoint. We're going to run endpoint list. So we're interested to see if there are any changes into the ingress and we'll see that this is now enabled and if you look at you'll see that this is class that star we can do the same thing we clear that and we go to the the other one the other node we run that and see if there is anything enabled any and we'll see that this is enabled again, and this is that star because uh, you recall you have two services. That star one is running on port um, on master, and the other one is running on node two. So this is kind of another verification that now the um, the policy that we just apply is enforced. Okay. Now let's go ahead and re-execute the same command again. So we are going to land um, a ship, a uh, TIE fighter type ship on um, Death Star. Let's see if it's allowed. 
and by according to the policy that we just applied that is allowed so you'll see that ship landed here and um, let's do the same thing from x-wing so x-wing should not be able to because it has a different label so it's going to run that and we'll see that it keeps waiting uh, forever so which means that it, this service is not allowed so let's go ahead and cancel out okay then let's go ahead and implement l7 policy we come up here um, so again this is cilium um, network policy the type the kind again we're using using the same rule basically we um, adding um, l7 rule to the rules we already have so uh, again and the, the this part is really the same as before we haven't made any change so basically this will include both l3 l4 and now we are tagging l7 so l7 part is under rules and then we are um, applying it to http and the method is post and this is the path so basically only this is allowed only this path is allowed v1 request landing um, and everything else all other services are uh, disallowed and again only empire ship are will be allowed to call this method so let's go back and run this and you may run into we'll see that it gives you um, uh, a warning here but uh, don't worry about that it actually it heals itself and then we'll see that it uh, actually now apply so we could we can verify that the service uh, now um, the rules applied on line 59 again you're going to from a TIE fighter, see we can call into V1 request landing. So let's go ahead and run that. And we see that indeed that is allowed. So you're able to do that. However, if you're going to call now a different method, this one, exhaust port. So let's go ahead and run that. And we'll see that we get access denied. So we see that the rules is now working. We can look at the uh, all the um, policies that have been applied through Cilium using kubectl. So we do kubectl describe Cilium network policies and we'll see um, all the... Network so we only have one rule right now and that is what is uh, showing here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can also do the same thing from a Cilium point of view. So that was from Kubernetes point of view, we can do the same thing. So recall that Cilium also has its own CRD. So let's go ahead and run that. And we get the similar you know, information, but a slightly different way Cilium um, represents the, the same thing. Now let's take a look at how about command line. We, we, we saw how um, Cilium or uh, um, how about UI works. Now let's and go ahead and take a look at Cilium um, command or command line as well. So for that, we're going to run some of those commands again. So Cilium exec and then fighter. So let's go ahead and run that. So this is allowed. And then we're going to run a command which is not allowed. So let's go ahead and run that. So access denied. And also this uh, X-Wing try to land. And we see that again that is not allowed. So basically to generate some traffic here. And then um, on line 72, uh, we need to um, start Cilium Hubble. So Cilium Hubble port um, dash forward and then ampersand basically opens a, a port for us. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that. So for you, you need to run this before proceeding further. So online. 74, Hubble service pod data star. Um, the pod name is uh, Death Star, sorry, and the protocol HTTP. So show us any, um, all the traffic that is coming from the pod, um, the, the destined for that, that star, and uh, the protocol is HTTP. So let's run that. Oh, it's, uh, sorry, I have to run that myself. Okay, now that's enabled. 
So let's go ahead and run that again. And you see all the traffic that we just generated. And you see some of them are forward, some of them are a drop. So if we now only, we are only interested on the drop um, verdict. So let's go ahead and run that. And these are the drop first um, so far. So all these uh, drop uh, connections. So it can be specific. You can take a look at, for instance, the HTT, the protocol, the specific protocol, or even, uh, you know, what is, um, it is forwarded or dropped. So it's very convenient. It's a very flexible tool set that you can use. Again, we have an, uh, the option of running it from the command line, or you can run it from the UI. So this is it for this episode. There are other features such as cluster mesh that I'll be covering in a future episode. Also keep in mind that Cilium is still evolving and features such as service mesh are still in beta. And in order to actually use service mesh, um, you have to join a beta program. So I'll be covering service mesh in the future as it becomes more mature. If you don't know uh, what the service mesh is, you can view my video on ECO, which is a mature service mesh, and you can kind of imagine what some of the features will be uh, appearing in um, Cilium. Your know, Cilium is a fantastic technology, especially uh, it uses EVPF. It's kind of revolutionary in terms of performance. So I'll be keeping a uh, close uh, watch on Cilium, and I'll be covering more of its feature in the future. And uh, thanks for watching. If you find this episode useful, please give it a like and also subscribe. Thank you.